Welcome back to Bench Racer X here on RacerXOnline.com. I am Kellen Brower. He is Donnie Southers. And today we're actually going to be talking about something that hasn't uh, really to do with the, the racing, I guess, or the results from the weekend here in Glendale that we just came off of, but more so uh, an overarching topic of the sport that has been captivating some people. We've been getting a lot of responses about it, and it is that Supercross has elected this year to shorten the whoop length uh, to a maximum of nine, at least for right now, and eliminate dragon's backs from the tracks completely. Uh, so before we get into what director of Supercross Mike Mui had to say about it, Donnie, uh, what was kind of like your initial reactions to hearing about this change in the first place? Uh, I think it was. I think it's a good forward thinking move that the series is looking at this because rider safety. If there's one thing we can say this year, without jumping too far ahead, there have been way less season-ending injuries through the first third than what we've seen in the past four or five years. So I'm I'm happy to see it, but it felt like I mean we had a dragons back at A1 and then they removed it in the morning, and it just I don't know if how last minute this was, if that makes sense. So like, I don't know. I know they're talking data and things like that, that we'll get into, but uh, excited that they're thinking that, but the implementation maybe could use some work. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? That's a fair point. I had not thought about the dragon's back removal at Anaheim, which thinking back to that moment, everyone was kind of like, huh? Cause they thought it was one of the easier dragon's backs that we've seen. It jumped out to a flat landing. There was nothing to land off of or nose pick like Barsha did at Nashville <laughs> last year or anything like that. Um, so definitely like, I think either maybe it was happening on the fly or just something that they're like, you know what, let's just make this change, make it happen before someone gets hurt on it or something along those lines. Cause it, it was, you know, they did it on press day and then suddenly bam, we get there on Saturday and it's gone. So, uh, Steve Mathis at Detroit, uh, last week, week and a half ago now at this point, talk to the director of Supercross, Mike Mui about why this change, like what exactly is the point of, uh, downsizing the whoops, eliminating the dragon specs. And this is what Mike had to say. Um, he goes, first and foremost, we've got to look at rider safety. As you mentioned, the Dragon's Backs, we've removed all of them from the tracks in the current season. We've gone down to nine whoops total, at least for the foreseeable future. We're going to play with that size as the season goes on and kind of see what works, what doesn't. We'll take rider feedback and make decisions on that. So it's obvious they're they're um, you know looking at a lot of aspects of this, but I guess what's your take, Donnie, first and foremost on the fact that they actually are getting rider feedback on this and I'm assuming some more, you know, team feedback and stuff like that about this. It's not just simply, we think this needs to be changed and we're running with it. There is at least some degree of discussion about this. Yeah. It's really great that they're including the riders in that. And it's also really great because we've talked about riders not being as open as we would like them to be. And if riders are publicly talking about this. They've come onto shows. I know you've done interviews in the pit. A lot of riders have come out and said good, bad, neutral. And, and it's nice to have this conversation. I hope it actually means something going forward and the changes that we see. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, regardless of whether this is the right or wrong move, the fact that there is discussions going on between um, Feld and the riders is always a positive step, in my opinion. I'm um, getting deeper into what Mike wanted to kind of discuss about this change, though. Um, he continued by saying, we're looking at data and compiling data. You would think that there would be more over 50 years than what uh, that we've been, but we're going back and looking at past years and utilizing what are called fall down reports. That says every single location that a rider has fallen on the course and compi uh, comparing where that is. Is it in the whoops? Is it in rhythm lanes? And trying to make an educated decision based on data. Uh, we'll see what we learn this year, what we learn next year, but we have to start somewhere and that's where we're at right now. So that's what Mike had to say about that. When he was asked about why nine whoops and why we're not seeing longer sets, he said nine seems to be a number that when you start getting into 10, 11, 12, 13, We've had 14 and 16 before. So we started small on the low end of the scale. I don't think that nine is probably the number that's going to stick, but we also don't didn't want to start with 14 and work backwards. Nine is the number uh, we're at now and we'll continue to look forward. So, um, I, you know, in, in, in this quote, Donnie, he talks about not wanting to go too far and start, you know, I guess with the low number and, and work up. Would you say that this is, this is the right approach to this, you know, start small and go forward? It's not good for racing. It's not necessarily what we want as a fans, but it is the smart way to do if you want to see if this is actually a meaningful change. Because like he said, if we're normally at 16 and we just cut one or two off the end, that's not going to move the needle enough. But we've gone all the way down to nine, which I think is arguably is the smallest you can possibly go before it's not really a whoop section anymore. It's just a couple, you know, moguls. 
um, and see how that goes. And through six rounds, you have to say there have not been nearly as many devastating crashes in the whoop section as what we've seen in years past. Jeremy Martin is the only one that I can think of off the top of my head of like, wow, that was a really scary whoop crash. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, like you said, it, it, it basically turns into not a whoop section at some level. And especially when we get to more East Coast tracks, the dirt's softer, it becomes a little bit more apparent that they're jumpable. At Glendale this past weekend, these guys were kind of in them before, you know, or out of them, I said, I guess, before they were in them. They just get on top and then bam, they're in the corner. Uh, very, very fast set of whoops in Glendale. But uh, like we even heard Christian Craig on Steve Mathis's uh, podcast, Donnie said, yeah, it kind of looks like another rhythm section. Yeah, yeah. He said he was like, I think it was in Detroit. He said on track walk, everybody kind of like, you know, kicked the dirt, said, oh, it's kind of soft. Three, three, three it is. And nobody really even made an attempt to do anything but that. Yeah. So at Glendale, I kind of went around the pits and tried to get a little bit more of a, a discussion or a consensus going on. I talked to a couple of team managers, a couple, a couple riders, and then was able to ask a few of them post-race kind of what their thoughts are on all this. So the first one we're going to listen to here, Honda HRC team manager, Lars Lindstrom. I asked him about the change to nine whoops and whether he thinks this is the right move. And this is what Lars had to say. I think for the, the amount of whoops, I think it's fine. I, you know, I don't think uh, that it's necessarily like a, a huge thing. I mean, the, I know that there's been a lot of talk about the dozer whoops versus loader whoops. Um, I mean, tonight, the type of dirt that this is and the, the way that they were able to build the track while it was good, normal conditions, you know, without mud and, and all these things, they stayed pretty good where we were blitzing on that, which was awesome, you know? Um, so that was cool. Um, but as far as the amount of whoops, I don't really think it's a, it's a huge deal. I like that there's not less whoops than nine you know but um but around nine is, is probably fine so that's what lars had to say donnie he you know obviously looks at this situation from um, a different viewpoint than being on the racetrack but w what is your kind of take on what he had to say there um i love lars because he's one of the only people in the pits as far as like a man's position goes that does share his opinion open and honestly and i mean like he said like nine's fine it's good for if it's good for racing it's doing safer. I, I, from his perspective, why wouldn't the change make sense? Yeah. Well, I mean, as we talked about, I guess Lars basically said, I'm glad it's not less than nine. Cause as you put it, it, it turns into a situation where they're almost not whoops if it's less than nine. Um, and then as he said in Glendale, you know, they were, they were clear blitzers all the way through everyone blitzed them all day. And Lars has said, um, on a few podcasts, I think, uh, with Steve Mathis and uh, with Gypsy Tales as well, I think Lars also said, more people are blitzing whoops today than ever. Uh, you go back to even 10 years ago, 20 years ago, guys, half the field would jump all the way down to C practices, has some level of being able to blitz, which means the whoops get churned up a lot worse. Uh, by the end of the night, you have a lot deeper notches, ruts, holes in the whoops. And, and Lars has kind of been the guy in front of that saying, like, that makes the general consensus of whoops on the racetrack less safe because they're all difficult. It's not like there's one line on the track that's actually still good by the end of the night. And I don't want to get like baseball where, you know, as the sport evolves, we need to evolve our strategies with it. And it's easy for us to criticize like, oh, like it used to be. It's a smarter idea for these riders to adapt as the night goes on. Are they blitzable early? Then you do that. But when that line goes away, there's no you like pride doesn't make doesn't pay. You know what I mean? Like you have those people that are like, I'm going to blitz all the way to the end, even if you can't. I'm like, for what? It's more dangerous and it might even be slower. All right. So from the measured approach of Lars Lindstrom to the opposite end of the scale. We're going to talk uh, this last little bit about what Phil Nicoletti had to say. Phil has been around the sport for a very long time. We know he is uh, unfiltered as he has a, uh, a an article on racetracks online every week that's even titled that. So here is what Phil Nicoletti, who finished eighth in Glendale in the 250SX main event, had to say about nine whoops and the track in general. Do you want my honest opinion? I want your full-hearted honest opinion. Are we... We only go to nine whoops and no dragon's backs and they're dozer whoops, but we got rhythm lanes that are three football fields long and they're just guys are ejecting like they bounced off a trampoline. But that's okay, you know, but we can't have more than nine whoops and a dragon's back. What? Who in, who's making these calls? Who's I mean, the rhythms are so long, I can't see the end of them, you know? <laughs> and there's so many jumps, you forget which rhythm you're even on. So. And the transitions were gnarly, and I don't know, who's ever making the calls, never ridden a Supercross track before in their life, so 
that's kind of where I'm at. So. All right, the ever unfiltered Phil Nicoletti letting us know his thoughts on the situation. Um, yeah, reactions, Donnie? Phil comes in hot. Uh, I love Phil. I love Phil. You will never not get honesty from Phil. But he does bring up a really good point because this weekend we had the longest rhythm sections I have ever seen. And on the track map, when you were when I was looking up when they came out, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And they had that little kink in them. It's really cool to see the track map have that long rhythm. But in actuality, I mean, there were three big crashes. They all led to a ending a guy's night, if not more than that. And I know that you talked to a couple writers about getting lost in a rhythm. And when it's that long and you mess it up a little bit, now you have to try to think 12 more jumps you have to go to try to figure it out while you also have guys behind you that might be jumping on you. So there's probably a little bit of survivor bias where we fixed the whoops and now we're putting a spotlight on crashes that happen elsewhere. But it is something that I think he does have right. This track map, maybe not, maybe not something we should do next year. Yeah, well, I mean, Glendale specifically, always gnarly, big track, a lot of floor space there. And walking the track on Friday, the rhythm section after the finish line jump was particularly peaky. Um, and I saw Hunter Yoder crash there. I saw a couple guys case it pretty gnarly on press day. And then Josh Cartwright and Ryder DeFrancesco go down in the night show, and both of them needed to take a ride to the uh, medical truck. And then Thrasher, the big one, uh, a rhythm section or a rhythm jump in that section that most guys said was sketchy all day long. You're going from a three foot single into a pocket of a four foot single and a five foot single out. You're going up and landing in a sharp pocket and going out which caught thrasher come up comes up short and then gets ejected off the front of the bike and phil even said to me after that happened he's like i wasn't doing that jump all day and then after that i was even less inclined to try it like it, i was losing time not tripling into that pocket but you see someone get hurt right there um so yeah obviously again like you said maybe we're putting a little bit of a spotlight on it but guys crash like th th they crash in in every area of the track and, uh, you know, maybe the whoops are a little bit safer now, but we're still going to have areas where these guys can get hurt. It's super cross. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a dangerous sport. Like everybody knows that. It's just we got to uh, at least we are doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, at least something. Right. Um, we'll point out real quick. Uh, I wish I had asked Nicoletti this, but last year at Oakland, Phil crashed in what I believe was a set of loader whoops. They're dozer whoops this year. And it was, I think, 14 whoops long in Oakland. And that ended his Supercross season. So he is part of the data that Mike Mui and the guys at Feld Entertainment are looking at to try to clean up, you know, getting these guys carted off in the whoop section at least. So, um, yeah, it maybe feels grumpy about it, but he is one of the numbers. He is one of the numbers at least. I think even if you would have asked him about that, I don't think we would have been able to air his answer. I don't know how much of it would have been <laughs> unbleepable. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, at the moment, that is the current change. Nine whoops, no dragons backs. It sounds like there is a possibility within this season we see expansion of that. We see it go from nine to 10 or nine to 11 whoops at some uh, a point so that we don't just have three jumps in through the whoops and out. And um, we'll see how it kind of continues to progress. Uh, but that's kind of the current status of the whoops in Supercross, what Mike Mui, uh, Lars Lindstrom, and Phil Nicoletti have to say about that situation. Donnie, thanks for joining me here on another edition of Bench Racer X. Be sure, guys, to visit racerxonline.com for all your motocross and supercross news.